Hello there, Castle Fanatics! Today we're going to look at Crichton Castle. A castle that does not appear often in Scottish history, which in contrary makes this castle particularly interesting. I will talk about how it is known as a backyard castle. In fact, at one point, the English tried to take over the castle's power, and the castle was given to different people, one after the other. Let us start with its history. Interestingly, this castle is not as old as you might think. The land that Crichton Castle was built was bought by John de Crichton in a region now called Midlothian, not far from the village Pathhead. Unfortunately, there isn't any information about John de Crichton. Since his title was a sir, I suppose that he was a wealthy man who wanted a clan for himself, but this is uncertain. What is certain is that it was built around late 14th century to early 15th century, again, hit or miss. One interesting thing is that the land that Crichton Castle was built was on the borders where, from the north of River Tyne, it was called Caledonia, and the Roman Empire tried with their many attempts to march into the heart of Scotland, but they neglected it over time. Because of it, Crichton Castle was somewhat vulnerable to invasions from the English, since the border was almost unchanged. In the late 15th century, the castle wasn't a full-fledged castle yet. Uh, John de Crichton only managed to build a tower house, which was like a sturdy building that tended to be quite tall and had very tiny windows so that his defences were still intact. When John had a baby, he named him William Crichton, and from a young age he already took very powerful roles in the castle and even beyond it. He tended to manipulate the king, who was James II, King of Scotland, and might have used him to get to power. Consequently, there is an event called the Black Dinner, and put William's reputation down. It made William Crichton's title, Lord Chancellor of Scotland, somewhat questionable. In the event, William Crichton invited an also young William Douglas into a feast. William Douglas was happy to accept, as he went into the castle lounged in with Crichton as a guest, until he was served a bull's head, which was an ancient Celtic metaphor for death. Eventually, William Crichton stabbed Douglas, also known as Sixth Earl of Douglas, to death in 1440 immediately breaking the etiquette of guest rights in an instant. While Crichton thereby captured Bothwell Castle for himself and was made Lord Crichton in 1443, John of Corserfine, the head of Clan Forester at that time, who was also Douglas's supporter, attempted to threaten him and eventually attempt attempted an to attack him. However, this was unsuccessful, as he already had the authority from King James II. William continued to expand the Tower House, which turned to the castle we would call now and also built a Collegate Church near his castle, which was part of Crichton Village also, and forced priests to pay salvations to him. When William's son took his father's role, who was also called William and was third Lord Crichton, it was then soon decided to take away the power from him, and his dear friend and al ally, Duke of Albany, was sentenced to treason in 1483. Crichton Castle and Bothwell Castle were then granted to Sir John Ramsay, but neglected it in 1488. Then, James IV, gave Crichton Castle to Patrick Hepburn and became 4th Earl of Bothwell. Do you start to see the pattern here? <laughs> However, James Hepburn made an agreement with Mary of Guise, who was an English regent at the time of the Scottish Reformation, when Scotland was turning from a papacy-dominating kingdom to a Calvinist predominant region. He took the oppor opportunity to take the English money for himself. Regent Aaron was furious and declared war to capture Bothwell Castle and Crichton Castle. Earl of Arran done that with full success by capturing them and eventually besieged them on November 1560. The castle then started to gain a reputation of marriage and wedding festivities. In fact, on January 4th, 1562, Patrick's daughter Jean and John Stuart, prior of calling him and illegitimate son of King James V, married each other in Crichton Castle, and Mary Queen of Scots was invited to it. It was said that she spent a few nights to celebrate this wedding, but she soon would find out that was a mistake. Patrick Hepburn murdered Henry Stuart in February 1567, who was Mary's husband and forced her to become her first, third husband on the same year in May. But soon after, in December of the same year, all Patrick Hepburn's titles and estates, including Crichton Castle, were stripped from him. After some time of uncertainty, who would be the next righteous or even good fifth Earl of Bothwell? It was decided to give it to someone who would give this castle another life, another moment to shine after all its misuse and neglect it went through. It went to Francis Stuart in 1568, son of John Stuart and Jean Hepburn. Thus, Francis married to Mar Margaret Douglas in 1577. He was known to have a very wild and open approach to life. He is a very interesting character in my opinion, however, for the sake of this video, I have to be brief. 
He went and studied at, at University of Saint Andrews and continued his studies in Paris, Paris and Rouen, and also visited Italy a few times. When he came back to Crichton Castle, he decided to give give the castle a bit of his artistic touch from the outside, which I will talk about that in the architecture section. Over time, he lost favor of James VI, who previously dearly supported him and was accused of witchcraft. Hence, his estates were taken away by 1592. He was forced to flee to Naples by the king, where he died, and soon the estates were given to his son, also called Francis, but had to give reparations to the king. So, by default, sold his estate to the Hepburns of Humbay. After the 16th century, the castle went back to its neglecting times, and it was soon sold to the Callenders family, who attempted to rename it Crichton House. And the castle started to ruin over time because it started to be ignored in general. It wasn't until 1956 the castle was given into state care by Solner, Mayor Henry Callender of Preston Hall. Now it is in the care of Historic Environment Scotland, which most castles are kept, are、uh, kept by. And Crichton Castle was seen as the preserved monument since 1921. There were two occasions, though, that the castle was in the spotlight. J. M. V. Turner, well-known Scottish artist, painted this castle, and also Sir Walter Scott featured this castle in his book *Marmon*. So, <laughs> there you go. I, I think it is safe to say that although it isn't a very famous castle, it still had a great potential to be built into something more grand. However, it just wasn't the main base. Of for the Earl of Bothwells as such. The sources for the information I took will be listed in the description below. Anyway, that is all for this video. If you want more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and like this video also. Leave in the comments below for any criticism or compliment you would like to share. Part two for this castle, where I will talk about its architecture and geography, will be coming soon. Goodbye, and hope you will have a great time visiting this castle when you can.